Okay. Well, we will start our policy meeting. Let me just make sure I haven't heard from Howard at all. Oh, Howard, traffic is bad, might be late, sorry. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, thank you for pulling this together. This is incredibly um, thorough and well done. I only had two questions on it, but actually my question answered itself when I got to page three with the timing and frequency. I was concerned about the junior class being able to fundraise all year for the junior prom, et cetera. But that is addressed in um, section five, five under timing and frequency. Um, I underlined one other thing. Um, under restricted or prohibited fundraising activities, um, number three, that involves students only correct um that other parent-led organizations might be able to still continue to do hey how are other types of fundraisers around that that is how this wording is i mean okay. I, uh, one of the things that i had added to my notes was just to talk about um the degree to which we would support or um distance ourselves from adult fundraising that was not consistent with that same expectation. This this fundraising policy pertains specifically to students who are engaged in fundraising um, and, and the funds that go to the, the accounts as described. Okay. So I would say that, that your question is actually a separate issue, which is uh, a totally separate policy regarding the donation of funds to the school. Are we, and I know we talked about it, and again, I apologize, I am, a little limited in my functioning today. Um, we are going to follow up or we are not going to follow up by fundraising by by coaches' parents. So we're just going to leave it by students. This policy is specifically for students. Okay. By either coaches, faculty, advisors, or other um, staff. Because the students are doing it. They're the ones selling the candy, selling the gears, uh, raking yards, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. All right. Put you on the spot, Howard, because we know you just got here. You got caught in traffic. Yes. I'll go to Jeff. Jess, did you have any questions or thoughts on this? No, I just uh, I think the only thing we needed was to define that um, timeline. But that, no, this addresses all of my concerns. Okay. Right. The timeline, how far before the season starts versus when it ends? Number six, number one. I wasn't sure if you said you know not. I'm sorry, what? Under number six, number uh, in his galactic athletic fundraisers, number one. We discussed it last meeting, but didn't land on anything. Right. Just just how to define a, a sport or season. Right. But when you can, you, I think an example came up of if kids are getting jerseys, you know, they want them by the time season starts. So, you know, can that fundraising period be two weeks before to, you know, I don't know if they, 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 there's fundraising after the regular season, postseason. I, I don't know how that works. Is preseason pretty much two weeks before? I'm trying to remember. I know football started around halfway we, through. We, once teams start beginning their practices, that constitutes the start of their competitive season. So like our preseason football practices are part of the New York State Public High School season. season. Yep. Okay. You know, I think one of the challenges we'll have, um, it, I agree with you, they may have to fundraise before the start of their official season, but if they're starting a fundraiser before the official season, how do we know who's on the team? Because conceivably those teams haven't had tryouts yet. They haven't, it, 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 it gets a little tricky, but I think there's ways we could work around it. Okay. And we may have to capture some language, whether when um, you guys meet with the coaches, yep. that would be, they can offer some 
So they have a lot to offer. I'm sure they do. That'd be helpful. The advantages and disadvantages to keeping it compressed but in, in practical terms, you need time. You know, if you're going to be making clothing items, for example, that at least a week, possibly well, it used to be about like a month, but probably like a week these days. Um, Actually, a week to make them and then two years for shipping. <laughs> um, Shop local, you can pick them up. <laughs> I, th I think two weeks is reasonable, because, but it also has the uh, I guess also advantage of your perspective of limiting that fundraising time. So, you know, a month before the season, that could have the kids being pushed to do stuff for three weeks, but two weeks, it's a week of fundraising, and then they're done, and, you know, get back to the actual athletics. So I like the, the tentative two weeks. So that being said, if, if, in, if with the, when you speak to the coaches, if the history is such that more time is needed, you know, they do have you your question is a question I then have if it's two weeks before the season. Who's doing the fundraising then? Well, we at, at a at a finite time before a season begins, we will have sign ups. We will have rosters of oh. people who've signed up, but it's very possible that some of the people involved in the fundraiser don't show up day one. And it's also possible that children who were not fundraising preseason show up day one and would obviously not be denied the opportunity to play. So there's that gray area, but we coaches have a pretty good idea of who their returning players are um, and who their new players are simply because there's paperwork they have to fill out. They have to have physicals. Okay. We have a pretty good idea, but not a perfect roster. So it's possible. That's what you're saying. It is. Gotcha. Yeah. But if we're ordering jerseys, we don't put the kids' names on the jerseys. It's just the school name. If they're ordering a personal sweatsuit, sweatshirt, that has the name on it or the option if the child is buying it. But that's not necessary for the first game like the jersey is or the uniform, correct? All right. We would typically be issuing uniforms to all players. Now, we've identified some sports where that's a little more difficult. The two immediate ones that come to mind are wrestling and swimming and diving, um, simply because the uniforms um, are also essentially an undergarment. Um, right. So that in those particular sports, uh, athletes tend to um, purchase their own or fundraise for their own. Is it possible to put something in there about in extenuating cir circumstances or in, in, in or sports or whatever, um, where the school can't provide what it does for others, but that timeline can be flexible? I, I think so. I mean, I think if the board moves forward with some version of this policy, we would then really need to sit down with our athletic leadership and kind of go sport by sport with what are the district contributions, what are the expected athlete or family contributions, and then, then we can kind of have intelligent conversations about which ones um, would be fundraised for and, and which ones would be covered in the event that a child or family was unable to pay. And that gets tricky for some of our sports. But you're right, coaches would have the best idea as to timing and... I think so. Um, and I, you know, we can play around with the language. I think what I'm hearing today is that we, we want to have some flexibility on how we define an athletic season. And you know maybe maybe there's some discretion afforded to either the principal or the athletic director who signs off based upon the application. Um, right. Our next meeting, we'll take a look at a rough draft application. We've got it started, but not yet um, ready. It's based very loosely off of the one that the Booster Club though has been using this year, so it should be a pretty seamless transition for for coaches and advisors. And I don't think anybody's looking to nickel and dime will you start at three weeks early instead of two weeks early that's not what we're worried about we just don't want to have to do a football raiser football fundraiser in the middle of baseball season right. yeah any other thoughts howard i think the two things are trying to set some sort of boundaries but also always about with all our policies yeah. all about flexibility for individual cases so cynthia had mentioned um so 
a draft of this policy we shared with our athletic director. He in turn shared it with the head coaches of each of our sports. Um, they've given us some feedback, some of which I'll talk through tonight. And then I've also scheduled time for us to meet with them on Monday the 15th so that we can kind of respond to their questions and concerns. Um, a couple of things, though, that came through. So they responded with their initial feedback, um, either by email or, or text to Larry, and he kind of compiled it. Um, one is I think we have to have more explicit language that even though it's titled fundraising by students, we probably need a disclaimer that this policy does not explicitly apply to booster clubs, PTOs, Friends of Music, NISCART, Friends of Rowing, and other recognized but adult-driven organizations, because we really don't have direct um, authority to legislate how they raise money. That that all comes down to what we were talking about shortly before we right. get in, um, you know, about our, our decision to accept or not donations. But there was some confusion that this policy applied in all instances to all of those recognized adult-led organizations. And that was not our intent. Yeah, I think I'm pretty clear. But, yep. yeah, but the language is ambiguous to some, so we wanted to straighten that up. No, that's very fair. The other feedback is is just a concern on the limited number of fundraisers. Um, so I do think that our policy has that flexibility as you've looked at it. It, it says generally each class or team would have one fundraiser, but that they may engage in additional ones for specific purposes. So I think there is that flexibility there. There might be just a fear of us trying to enforce the one and done, but I think as long as, you know, if they're raising money for jerseys or water bottles or a trip to see a professional soccer game, we would recognize that as an, a standalone that would have a clear beginning, middle and end and, and most likely be approved. So, but that was a concern that the coaches raised. Um, definitions of what constitutes an athletic season. Um, and clearly we understand that, that, and I think we can get some language um, the last two were probably the biggest that we have received feedback on so far from our coaching staff. The first is the language in this policy that would mandate that all interscholastic athletics fundraising go through our recognized booster club. Um, we have had a number of sports over many years that have organized their own athletic booster clubs that are sport specific. Um, and more that had done so last year during the transition from the old to the new booster club. So there was a question from coaches as to how firm the board was on requiring all interscholastic athletics to go through the booster club or whether we would permit it to go through a sport specific incorporated and properly credentialed single sport athletic booster club. Um, Nat and I can certainly share that the booster club was organized as an all-sport booster club, and they would be both um, willing and able to oversee the fundraising, the accounting, and the disbursement of funds for all sports. But I, I toss that out, not as a, as a recommendation, but as a question. How would you like to proceed? Because we have a number of sports that have their own booster clubs. I guess I would want to know why. What the event, what the disadvantage would be if they were dissolved. Um, some of the some of the feedback that we got was that um, they incurred some expense in forming. So there's the filing. There's the filing for a tax ID number. Um, there is certain percent for their scholarship. Talking about the individual, like the standalone, like a, a okay, friend. all right. I don't know if this is one, but friends of Will Cross, friends of Rome. Right. So first is just the expenses incurred, and they'd like to continue to use that um fundraising mechanism the second is control um you know the 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 booster club is a multi-sport multi-participant organization they 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 have articulated that their single sport booster clubs have a little bit more um team or sport specific control and the third is the holdback so the booster clubs um articles of incorporation and bylaws um, have a five percent holdback for administrative and operating expenses on all fundraisers. And there are some of our sports that feel that they want 100% of proceeds to go to their designated sport. The booster clubs also get the, the main booster club also gives a sports scholarships, right? Don't they use? Yeah, there's a, there's a variety of reasons that they collect those funds, yeah. but you know, for um, any expenses that they would occur, incur, uh, it's an all volunteer organization. They've been very, very transparent, but they do withhold a percentage of each fundraiser. 
this fundraising policy though is not just for sports this is for everybody everybody did we have teachers or class advisors? We haven't yet because the majority of our other fundraisers go through the extracurricular clubs and okay. activities accounts. So th that's already their pro forma. Okay. So for them, it would be explaining, whereas on the athletic side and to a lesser degree, maybe on some of the field trip um, fundraising that has been done outside of a PTA or PTO, um, there may need to be a little bit deeper dive. But okay. the ones that right now um have operated with the most flexibility and freedom have been our interscholastic athletics okay i would i would say that and this would be my personal opinion i don't know if anyone would support me but one of the goals of bringing things under a single unit by booster club is to make things more level even among sports so it's actually an on purpose thing yes individual teams will have less control but that's part of the goal is to make things even for everyone and no one may agree with you on that we talked about equity at the beginning yeah. and that that's that was the goal right. that we were working toward equity here and so equity means give it all to one spot and have them regulate yeah i should have had tissue tonight i apologize uh, i will draw a distinction and we talk about this all the time about equal versus equitable um and equal means same dollars for every program equitable means that the funding is afforded based upon the program needed an expense. And uh, the, the example I'll give you is that tackle football is a much more expensive sport than flag football. Um, so equity means funding what's needed as opposed to equal. I think that's probably what you meant. No, actually, no, no. well, to some extent, yes, but that within the um, even the equity area, not just the equal area, the equity area is, is, is even as possible. Yes. Or it will not be if there's single or uh, four organizations just by the way work. yeah let me let me kind of explain the the uh the flip side of that one of the concerns raised by our coaches which i think is legitimate is that we have a lot of groups some incorporated some not that are doing adult fundraising to um funnel money into our sports and this policy doesn't explicitly limit or regulate that but you uh, if, if you have parents doing uh football pools if you have guest bartender programs at any number of local establishments um that's money that people would raise as adults and then approach the school about making a donation to a program and that's different than what this policy is legislating this policy wouldn't stop that this policy doesn't explicitly promote or stop it correct? right it's okay and that's okay because the whole point of this exercise was that was, was on behalf of the kids to right. sort of turn into sort of a larger philosophical thing. But to to me, what the adults do is what the adults do. Right. So if a if a team's parents wanted to either fundraise or contribute so that teams could have either a team breakfast or a team dinner adjacent to their home contests, um, that would be something that. The team would be able to accept as a donation it's not student fundraising it's not kids going door to door or you know hitting up their grandparents for the umpteenth time it's it's as a result the golf team flies to pebble beach in a helicopter and you know everyone else has to go by bus that's great that's the base and i'd like to brought a ride but that does actually now if this just popped in my head and it might not be the right question but if adults doing an adult fundraiser at an adult location adult activity and something terrible happened and the reason for say um the bowling team to go to yes. pebble beach for the bowling championships something happens at that event does the school bear any liability because they're raising for the school technically no okay um practically i will say that any time that anything is being done arm's length or further from the school district we would probably at least be named okay. in legal action or lawsuit. Okay. that's just the way the world works and then we spend uh time energy and dollars uh to ourselves. highlight the fact that yeah. we were not conducting it and it was not school approved or endorsed um, and this policy would help support that this that we don't control any adult it, it does i mean i think the optics of particularly uh, you know among fundraising issues, probably the the most feedback I've had in my short time in district has surrounded 
the whole notion of guest bartending and whether that sends the right message for an educational entity. And even if it's being done in our name and for the benefit of, um, there are many in the community who struggle with, you know, whether that is something that the school wants to be involved with in terms of accepting the funds. And that that's a bigger question than this policy, but right. it's one we probably should address at the board level at some point. Because I think this is a great policy for students, for our students and our faculty to keep on the rails, so to speak, to keep our fundraising above board. But I think the concerns that we're getting feedback on are precisely, why does my kid have to raise $500 to play flag football when, you know, this, this, or this? Or And we're not going to address the concerns that people are coming forward with. Right, if it's an adult-led activity, right, through a friends of, we don't really have any control. Or unless we make a policy, say, unless we make a policy, right? Isn't that what you said? Well, you know, it goes into it goes into donations, and and so it, right now our our existing policy language is pretty quiet on whether things that are prohibited for students are permissible for adults raising money for the school. So, for example, children can't sell games of chance, but adults can certainly do raffles or football squares or cow pop squares, um, which I've seen done. And it's pretty funny. <laughs> those are all games of chance in the state's yeah. eyes. And so, so, you know, I'll use that as an example. Um, is the district and, uh, you know, is the board and by extension the district okay with adults engaging in legal activities for them that benefit students if it would not be an activity that the students could? Yes. Yes. Well, that's a whole other thing. Right. But this does not touch that. And that's a message we have to send to our coaches is that if you have adult groups, organized or not, raising money to benefit our kids, the only thing we're worried about is that the donation hits an account, either a team's account, an extracurricular account, or the booster club account as a donation. And that helps us be good stewards of the funds. So if they raise $1,000 at a, um, a high-end wine, wine tasting, and they decide that they want to donate it to the school, we we show a receipt and an expenditure of that same donation. That That's our obligation right now. And I'm not trying to muddy the waters. I'm trying to make them. No, it, it's it's making sense. But I, I do. I don't think we need to go so far afield that we're going to regulate every type of fundraiser for everything. But I do think eventually we'll need to address if a donation is made to the school, does it go to the team or does it go to the booster club? I think that's something we might have to think about. Well, and right now I don't think the teams have any standalone accounts, do they? When in the extra class realm? I don't believe so, no. So right now, no. the only way for the school to receive the funds would be as a donation to the general fund expended on the team's behalf through the extracurricular accounts or as a conduit through booster club. Unless, unless they incur the expenses directly. So for example, if, if the parents of the tennis team want to do a buffet lunch for the kids and they raise the money, buy the lunch and give the kids the food, that's a little easier because from an accounting standpoint, we haven't received the funds. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So it sounds like those friends of whatever's can still fundraise. They just would have to go the donation route or go through booster. Am I right? Not have the kids. And not have kids. And I think that kids. is one of the main points that Judy and Howard have both brought up at different points is that we we feel our kids might be um, fundraising too often or maybe for purposes yes. that are less clear to the parent, even though they're clear to the coach and maybe even the, the child. But... So the friends groups have to be adult driven. Correct. Yep. So once, is this ready to go, this student fundraising, is this ready to go to the board for review? So I think we've, uh, That's fine. Matt and I are going to meet with the coaches. Right. We want to finalize the language on what constitutes the season and we can right. zero in on that 
Um, but I think the big, the biggest issue I'd see with this draft is probably do our sports use the booster club or not? Um, and the board is in a really tough position. The board policy committee is in a tough position now because I know that there will be programs that want to fundraise outside of the booster club with kid led issues. And I know that if we allow that, we have diminished the booster clubs role as their incorporation documents reflect you know they are the only sports booster club um rowing separate are they recognized though through um our insurance agent yes oh. so we have we have two right now we have friends of niski and rowing and we have um the all sports booster club the niski and booster club recognized i it's my, my vote and i'll probably be run out of town but i think it needs to go through the booster club at, because they we know they're set up properly we know they have the correct 501c3 we know they have the correct accounts you know that they are set up the way it's supposed to be they're not loosey-goosey that's my thoughts but what do you guys think yes Yes. Yeah. Booster club, no booster club or yeah. Well, man, I can certainly um, advance that with our coaches. We'll listen very carefully to their feedback. They may offer some insights that we're not yet privy to. Um, but I think this would probably take one more meeting here. And what Cynthia and I had discussed, or maybe it was Matt and I, is, you know, ideally this policy would get to our board. Um, for, for two full readings and adoption by the end of the calendar year so that it takes effect with the new school year on July 1st. Great. I say calendar year, I mean school calendar year. Is there any thought or is there time in that time frame to talk to like club advisors or class advisors, anybody yeah, I think other we'll than athletic? Through our extracurricular account. Yeah. yeah. I just think this isn't, this probably bubbled up because of the athletic fundraising, but this policy affects everything, not just athletics. So their eyes and opinions, I think, would be great. Yep, we can definitely do that in time lapse. All right, anything else on the fundraising? It's just really nicely put together. You guys put a lot of time into that. Very nice. Was there anything else that we had to cover? Yes. The taking of charitable donations ties into the conversation. We have a current policy on the books, and Theory One, interestingly, has sent us just recently an update, a recommended update to that. Um, also, interestingly, the one that we have on books is two pages long, and the area one update is shorter. It doesn't happen just in depth. It doesn't happen all that often. Um, I have copies of both. Uh, we can certainly have some discussion on it, or if you guys can take it with you, and we can discuss it at the next meeting. And I'll just add, these policies are slightly different than what we were talking about, about accepting donations. This policy um, has been a long uh, valued policy in school policy manuals because it limits the access um, for outside fundraisers to come in to a captive audience of school children and school employees and to raise money. So it's really um, designed to prohibit that. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, if if um, the magazine sales. Or yeah, I mean, because those, you know, there could be a way that those would be student driven. This might be, um, well, in, in many communities, the United Way will approach an organization and they will offer payroll deduction for employees. Uh, and, and the United Way has never done this. So I want to be very, very clear that this is a, 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 just an example to illustrate. But if the United Way said, we'd like to come in and talk to all of your classes about the importance of giving to United Way, and then we'd like to give them a pledge card so that they could donate directly to us, this policy would prohibit that because it's a captive audience 
And if we allowed that, I can think of any number of organizations that would come in and want to give pledge cards to kids while they're at school during the regular school day. So I like this with deletion of everything from however to the bold personnel. I have the paragraph under students and the paragraph under personnel. That's that. There's no outside organizations asking our students to give them. Say that again. Okay, I guess I'm looking at the, this is the update. Okay. Do you have an extra copy, Cindy? I do. Thank you. Anybody else need a copy? This is, not def this is the updated um, one that he is discussing. Talking about. Okay. We delete A, B, and C and stuff around. Why? Because there should be, I, I, I don't think that this allows outside organizations under certain circumstances to solicit our students and uh, staff. And I would say no. So, so C, for example, um, it, the way that Howard is talking about this, however, this policy does not prevent the following types of fundraising activities. C, for example, is indirect forms of charitable solic solicitation on school grounds that do not involve coercion, such as placing a bin or collection box in a hallway or other common area for food, clothing, other goods, or money. I mean, we would want. We do that all the time. Maybe okay. right? It's, it's there's a balance. Yeah. And I think A is there's no coercion to list for that that particular example. And A, I could think of like an outside entity, like when we do the relay for life, which is a fundraiser. Um that does involve students, but it's entirely outside the school day. It's optional. I think the the exceptions are. Are, are written into this policy, which we didn't write, um, Erie Wimbosis did, to acknowledge some of the unique partnerships that do exist between not-for-profits and public school districts. And, you know, Cynthia gave so, one example, I gave another. I read our policies as only in effect during the school day and school hours and such. So the uh, A, for example, maybe it is necessary, but in my mind, it's not necessary. Our policies don't affect things such as really for like, okay. with the exception of them, you know, using facilities. But, but, you know, during the school hours and in the building, perhaps the, the sort of basket thing. I don't, I, I don't. So if you don't keep in B for the sake of argument, um, I said uh, up above, it says it's a violation of district policy to ask district students directly to contribute money or goods for the benefit of a charity during the hours in which they are compelled to be on school grounds. Okay. So number one, A deals with outside of out and being outside of hours. C deals with being compelled. Um, B it, it basically is saying that you could, could have arms length transactions. You could be selling money to selling tickets to um, an event that ultimately the proceeds will go. But, but you're only there's no extra consideration. We're just selling for the price of the ticket and for the benefits. You know, the benefit is going to go to the charity. That's me. You don't, you don't think that's, is that okay? Yeah. Is that not okay? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking of a concrete example. I've seen instances where a local uh, volunteer fire department would be doing a charity talent show and selling tickets, and the proceeds would be donated to a community organization. So, in that instance, I guess part B would say could people sell those tickets in school or the firemen versus the police in a basketball game in the gym to raise money for relay for life or at least you know for right right organization technically speaking so yeah i, I can see your point of not wanting the examples i think if, I think without those examples, people will instead be saying, oh, no, well, what about, you know, collecting coats for the city mission? Whatever we've done in the past. So like, right, we do socks. I forgot about that. Now, or the socks and things like that. But it'll be it's going to raise questions. Um, yeah. And I think we do a very good job as public schools, not just in this unit, but elsewhere in vetting those. I mean, people don't just freely have access. They tend to arrange it through a main office and a principal's office. I, I you know, we're very sensitive to whom and, and how often we put people in front of school children. 
I always put all my shoe on the podium. <laughs> Did you say shoe on a podium? Just check that. <laughs> I'm old. Right. And I'm sure the school gets asked many more times than they have an event. You know, there's many requests for events and we do a handful. Yeah, I mean, probably our highest frequency um, requests are, are are for using our communication channels, right? Yeah, promotion. Yeah, it's more promotion than anything else. It's, hey, we've got this great thing going. Can you send it out? Because you have everybody's email addresses. <laughs> and we tend to be a little selective about that because those communication tools are purchased at taxpayer expense for school purposes. Right. But Matt, you could probably comment on Oh, that's it. And it, and it implies some uh endorsement and we typically look for there to be some benefit to certainly uh the community but really students and and, and um yeah there's times where we're running a april break camp well there's a lot of organizations out there doing that and it's obviously we can't really be the conduit for that so and i think this protects us from, from that as a any other feedback on this particular and I do like A, B, and C. I think they're like, fine. Hey, isn't that kind of like the parents fundraising thing? It's not during our time. Um, we can't control A anyway. It's in the first paragraph. So it's, right? right? We can only control what's happening here. So can't stop it. Well, the only thing I think of is the walk, the light, the night thing, right. which takes place. At to Howard's point, that is captured in the very first paragraph on school property during regular school hours. True. So technically, um, everything that could occur under Part A can occur whether that's there or not, if I'm reading it right. He wasn't so bang that shoe again. <laughs> I, other than A, I think this is nice. This is good. B is different because they could purchase tickets for the fireman charity while they're at school. And C is different because it is non-coercive um, common collection bins. The biggest one I see here outside of like food and clothing is penny drives. Right. So they put the big containers in the hallway. Kids bring in their socks filled with pennies and it goes to a good cause. That that would be another example for item C. We did that in school. We had homerooms bring in change and see which homeroom brought up the most money. Now that I think about it, I forgot about that. Now there's a fine line between incentive and coercion because when kids get competitive by homeroom, um there is a little more pressure and uh, a lot of schools have slowly phased out the classroom competitions in favor of a common collection in the hallway not surprisingly donations go way down uh, right same thing the only thing with a though is you could have a situation where you know you're for the uh, relay for life for example i mean you would hope that maybe there's a wall where students are able to for a dollar purchase something that's going to get hung up on something like that right or a student club is raising money for the humane society and they're selling something during the day wouldn't that preclude those types of things if perhaps that's out. what yeah perhaps that's what we intend and just there may be student clubs who do those kinds of things and they are positive i think they it would be covered under c yeah because these are negative it does say money too oh it says it does not so we're you're still allowed to do that if we allow that. right but it can be done in your social studies class where's your okay. five dollars but it can be done over lunch right buying a shamrock or a yeah. park or makes, that makes sense i guess it could be like you take the basketball team to a tournament and the basketball team is approached to buy this new scoreboard system that right then a makes sense so a is not redundant if we're talking about where kids are acting as students outside of school hours off of school grounds and not during before or after school well is that a good second it would depend who was raising the money for the scoreboard 
Yeah, if they're asking their parents, that's different. This is all about students. Right. Uh, so the scoreboard's a bad example. Um, the water bottle company comes to the basketball players and says, this is the new cool water bottle. Don't you all want it? Now they're being specific. It's yeah, that wouldn't be charitable, though. That would be commercial. So this is charitable Great. organization. So they're A is redundant. You do or don't? I do. I think A is covered in the first okay. paragraph. So I think it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, and we didn't even get into the commercialization of schools, but there are a lot of existing commissioner's regulations like naming rights and pouring rights. You know, if you go to other states, the high school stadiums are either Coke or Pepsi. Um, and, right yeah. So that would solve our new mascot. We could just sell the naming rights to somebody for millions of dollars. <laughs> we'll be well, right. Coca -Cola. If you're anywhere near Atlanta, it will be. Um, because uh, when I go to visit my son who's in Alabama, there's not a Pepsi to be found. All right. So I think we're good on that one. Are there, um, so we're good to move that forward to the board to replace the former policy? Yep. All right, that'll go as a first base. Great. Which? And that'll go next Tuesday, right, for the first read? Um, I don't I get that, Shannon. And then the only other thing we have is the makeup session for our newest board members, which uh, we, this is part of our ongoing board education. It's session nine of nine. Um, so the finish line is in sight. That is not something that we would necessarily live stream, nor is it something that others have to stay for, but everybody is, of course, welcome. So, Judy, I guess we could do the same thing. The gavel out before we gavel in. We'll close out. Thank you, everybody. Can I turn this off?